Hello and welcome to my most requested video of all times. I apologize, it's taken me years and years and years I've had requests for this video over many, many years for many, many people to share with you my stereo setup. And there's been reasons in the past that I just haven't done it before. At times, I just felt like the system wasn't up to what I considered a, a good standard. There was times when, you know, in the past few years when we were in that last house, we were kind of crammed in there. There just wasn't a lot of space, it wasn't really a good space to really show things off in this way. But uh, now that we're in this new space, I got things sort of set up. I got my system to a point where I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really happy with it, actually. And I'm ready to uh, share with you what I'm using, what I'm listening to, my vinyl on. I will sort of start off this video by saying this is sort of a Swiss Army knife of a system. Um, I don't have a dedicated two-channel listening area uh, kind of space really. Uh, I do have a turntable hooked to my PC in my office, but beyond that, this is where I, I really do my, my main amount of listening is here in the living room. Uh, so this is also a home theater setup. It's uh, a setup for, you know, video games, you know, Blu-rays, movies, uh, DVDs, um, I got a home theater PC here that I can do recordings of vinyl and other things on. Uh, I can also use that for uh, the sort of a, as a server for my uh, streaming of my digital audio. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a Swiss Army knife of a system. It's not really a dedicated sort of two-channel system. I uh, don't have a lot of I don't really have any kind of thing that would I would say is audiophile, but I have some really nice equipment. I put it together and I, it sounds really nice and I'm really happy with how it sounds. So uh, let's go ahead and get into the tour. Here we go. Okay, so we'll start off talking about the power side of things since that's sort of the basis of all this audio equipment that we use. Uh, it all needs power and I do run this through a Monster Power Reference Power Center HTS 3500. This just has some uh, large capacitors in it to sort of uh, filter the power a bit give me some control, give me some extra outlets to plug things into. Since I do have a lot of uh, a lot of pieces to this system, I do need a lot of power outlets and this just gives me a nice way to uh, sort of plug it all in and have some a bit of filtering going on. Normally I wouldn't buy something from Monster Power. It's kind of overpriced for what it is, I think, uh, because you're paying for that monster name. But I did find this at Goodwill one day, many, many years ago now for $15. So uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a great deal and I'm glad I picked it up. So uh, yeah, everything runs through this, uh, this power center. It does, as I said, it provides some filtering and some surge suppression and that type of stuff. It's pretty nicely built inside. I have taken it, taken the lid off and looked inside and it's, it's a pretty nice piece of equipment. And I, I would recommend this to someone if it was in, sort of in their budget, uh, it's, a, it's a good good sort of uh, power center. One of my customers that I do some home theater type uh, tech support for uh, uses a power center very similar to this and uh, uh, yeah it's, it's been good for them as well. So yeah that's that's where everything runs through that's sort of the power side of thing get some nice clean power from that. Uh, so that is the monster power center. Okay, so the next thing I will talk about here is sort of the heart of everything, of course, the home theater receiver. This is the Pioneer Elite SC81 receiver. It dates to about 2014 is the model year on this one. I've had this on my wish list since about 2014. I was looking at uh, upgrading receivers back then. I uh, just sort of found this one that I thought would fit my needs. Of course, at the time it was about $1,000. Uh, definitely out of my price range at the time. But, you know, I just sort of had save search on this one on eBay for a long time. Years and years and years of these coming and going. The price slowly coming down, slowly coming down. Um, and then uh, about a year, year and a half ago now, one showed up on eBay for a little over $100. And I was, I was like, that's quite a bit lower than what I had found in the past on the prices on this. This still seems to sell in the $300 range. So uh, right, right down around $100 was a great deal. Uh, so I jumped on that uh, buy it now on eBay and picked it up, as I said, about a year and a half ago now. Uh, it did manage to get some damage in shipping, unfortunately. You see there's a crack on the faceplate here, but otherwise the uh, 
The receiver works great. It's been awesome. This is my first elite receiver from Pioneer. I've had several Pioneer receivers in the past. I'm, I'm a big Pioneer fan. I'm very, very happy with this. It's, you know, it does 7.1, it's HDMI 1.4A, uh, has a lot of inputs, uh, definitely has a lot of power. Um, I did have a VSX 1080 was my previous receiver. That was from around 2010. Um, and I bought that one new at Best Buy and I was happy with it. Um, it had sort of a limited amount of power to drive the speakers I'm using. Uh, they do tend to be kind of power hungry and it was really struggling to keep up i found and this uh this elite receiver definitely has quite a bit more power than my previous receiver even though on paper you know it only has about 10 more watts per channel uh, but it, it it's got a lot it's got a lot more grunt to it i guess is is the best way to explain it um, this does have a nice sort of flip down uh, panel here where you can uh, do more fine-tuning kind of adjustments and stuff like that and of course it has a remote and as well that does all that and on-screen on-screen displays and automatic calibration for the surround sound and all that kind of stuff uh, very very nice receiver I've been I've been very pleased with it and it definitely uh, definitely did what I wanted to do and I'm glad I was patient and waited for it to come around and uh, I, I really enjoy using this receiver so that is the Pioneer Elite SC81 um, as I said, I think it's around 135 watts per channel is the listed output on this, but it definitely has some grunt to it. it definitely has uh, more truer, a more truer 135 watts than my previous receivers, 125 watts per channel did. And yeah, it's, a, it's just a great all around sort of home theater receiver. It does do true stereo kind of mode and all the different kind of uh, you know, surround sound modes and all the different latest and greatest. Pretty good amount of inputs and outputs. It's what I would consider to be limited on analog inputs and outputs. Uh, you know, these home theater receivers are mainly focused around HDMI inputs and digital inputs and outputs. So th they're, they're getting more and more limited uh, by the year as far as analog inputs and outputs. This, this does have enough for me but it's 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 a struggle and there's some things i'm sort of using using a, one input for two devices kind of thing so it's a bit of a struggle but it works for me now okay so the next thing we'll talk about are the speakers these are the polk monitor series 70 mark ii they are a tower speaker, dual six and a half inch drivers, really, really nice speakers. If you're on a budget and you're looking for good quality budget, budget speakers, I highly recommend the Polk series of speakers. They have different lines. Uh, these monitors uh, two series is sort of their one up from their, their lowest line. So it's definitely on the lower end, but uh, really great sounding speakers, really, really solid. Uh, these things are like 50 pounds a piece. They're not light. They're very heavy speakers. Uh, go ahead and pull off the grill on this one here. Do have your uh, four drivers here. I believe two of them are bass and, and two of them are for mid-range. And then you have your tweeter as well. Uh, sort of a dome uh, silk tweeter kind of thing. Uh, these speakers are ported. As I said, they're very heavy. They have some internal bracing on them. Uh, yeah, for the price, you can't go wrong with these. I would say they sound incredible. Uh, they do take, as I said, as I mentioned in the, the, the receiver portion, these do take a lot of power to drive. You need to have a receiver with, with a good amount of power to drive these. Uh, they don't look like much. Uh, they do take a good bit of power to drive, but otherwise I love these speakers. I bought these. Uh, I think about five years ago now, five or six years ago at this point. Okay, moving on, we next have my turntable. This is the Project RPM 1.3 turntable.
been discontinued at this point, been upgraded to uh, Project RM1, I think it is, is what they're calling it now. Uh, they've moved to a carbon fiber tone arm. It has a ceramic bearing. It has a magnetic anti-skating. It's definitely been upgraded from what this is, um, but this is working well for me now. I have done some upgrades to it. Uh, I'm really happy with, with how it works. Uh, would I rather have the newer version? Yeah, probably, but I'm not sure it's going to be a huge difference from what I already have. So this turntable, as you can see, it does not have a plinth. Uh, it's sort of a very minimal plinth design. It does not have a dust cover. I do normally keep a, uh, a felt uh, turntable mat on top of this cork mat to keep the dust off of here. It's not too big of a deal. You just gotta dust it off every now and then. I know people freak out about not having a dust cover. It's just not really that big of a deal. It, it doesn't seem to be a, an issue for me anyway. I'm, I'm pretty happy with using this as it is without any kind of cover. Don't really have a big problem with dust. So uh, I have, as I said, I have done some upgrades to this table. First off here, the, the cork mat is, is an upgrade. This turntable comes with a, a felt mat. Uh, as stock. Uh, the newer ones come with a PVC uh, laminated mat, which is pretty nice. Uh, so that's that's a nice thing that they have they have done. Um, I have added this record clamp here. It's just a copy of a, a well-known record clamp and it's uh, le less money to buy this and it works just the same. Does, does a really nice job of clamping things down. Um, I have also upgraded to the sort of, I guess you could call it the stiffer belt. This comes with a black belt as stock. It's a little bit more stretchy. This belt seems to do a better job of holding speed and, and getting up to speed. And it's just a, a stiffer, more rigid belt. And it, it seems to do things well in that respect. Um, next up, we have a Project Speedbox S. This is mainly just to uh, be able to easily switch between 33 and 45. I can go back here to the pulley. It's pretty easily accessible to switch speeds, but it's a lot easier just to push a button and it's a lot it's a lot more elegant, I think, of a, of a way to switch speed. So I like doing it this way. You know, these, these speed boxes aren't too expensive. The power supply that comes with this turntable already has some speed control uh, built into it. So I really didn't notice any difference between using the stock power supply and this power supply as far as the uh, the speed stability or the the accuracy of the speed uh, it's it's pretty accurate I've done the test with the with the app where you put your phone on the turntable and let it spin around and it tests the speed and and accuracy and it, it seems to do uh, pretty well with either power supply so this is just more of a convenience thing for me to have uh, to easily it also gives me you know power on and off here on the front instead of reaching back here there's a switch is on the motor back there it's a little bit difficult sometimes you if you fumble around too much you knock the belt off when you're trying to turn the turntable on and stuff so it's a lot easier to do it this way through this through the project speed box and it's a uh, it's it's a little more elegant as well uh, so moving on to the turntable side of things of course uh, as you see we have the uh, Nagaoka MP 110 cartridge on here if you're familiar with uh, Ian's channel over at high high vine news uh, channel uh, Ian over there in Singapore does a lot of great audio reviews and a lot of a lot of great budget cartridge reviews and uh, so far this is the this is the best you can do in a budget cartridge is the Nagaoka MP110 and I'm on my I think I'm on my third stylus on this cartridge I've had it for probably three plus years now really been enjoying the cartridge it is an amazing cartridge for the price and you can get these on eBay for really inexpensively if you're if you're shopping for an MP110 I recommend using eBay it's going to be under $100 for the cartridge and the uh, replacement stylus are around $50 which is incredible I was running the uh, Ortofone 2M blue or 2M red before uh, and the cartridge was like a hundred dollars and stylus replacement was like 80 and it's like why is it only twenty dollars less for just a stylus and I just that just rubbed me the wrong way so I love that I can get a new stylus for this for fifty dollars that's incredible under fifty dollars really it's it's usually around between forty five and forty eight dollars depending on how the exchange rate is go going you do have to wait for it to ship out of Japan 
uh, but that's not too big of a deal. They, they're pretty fast in doing that. I do have the turntable plinth sitting on some sorbethane feet, so that helps with vibration reduction as well as it's sitting on these travertine tiles. Uh, just a really heavy natural stone tile that's cut and it's nice and flat and it's heavy and it avoids having uh, resonance. If you set this turntable on on a uh, wooden wooden piece of furniture directly, you're gonna get some resonance and it's not gonna be uh, the best thing you can do for it. So I do recommend getting some sort of heavy sort of natural stone tile or marble or something like that. If you have a, uh, you know, cut out from a sink, from a countertop, uh, from out of marble and you wanna use that, that would be a great thing to use. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do to sort of have a really heavy, dense, um, anti-resonance kind of a stable platform for your turntable to sit on and then you know the sorbethane feet actually uh, sort of help keep uh, vibrations from getting into the turntable or vibrations from the turntable getting into other things kind of kind of gives it a way to isolate that so that's a nice another nice upgrade I've done to this uh, turntable the motor itself is actually since the motor is separate from the plinth on this turntable the motor is sitting on sorbethane pads as well Okay, so this part's gonna be a little bit tricky to show you, but I'm gonna roll in some, some B-roll footage in here to sort of help smooth things out. But as you see here, I have connected the Shit Mani uh, Turntable Phono Preamp. Uh, definitely another recommendation from Ian over at Highvine News. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing Phono Preamp for the price. Again, a, a giant killer of a preamp. Um, it does do moving magnet as well as moving coil. I think uh, from what I've heard, I've never tried it with a moving coil cartridge, but it's not a great preamp for a moving coil, but for a moving magnet cartridge, this is an incredible preamp. You see it does have some uh, nice load settings and gain settings and, and stuff. So that's really, really nice. And why this is sort of back here behind the turntable is I have it connected with some shit in interconnects. So it, there's only about six inches of cable between the outputs on the turntable from the tone arm and directly into the preamp that sort of eliminates the chance for noise to get into the uh, connections back there. Okay, so we'll talk about one last piece of analog audio gear before we move into the digital realm of the system. This is my JVC TDW318 cassette deck. It's a dual cassette deck from the mid to late 90s. A uh, pretty nice tape deck from the time. It does have automatic uh, calibration for recording, so you can uh, put your blank tape in there and do a calibration, and it'll set it up uh, so it, you get a, the best recording possible. I have been watching Cassette Comeback Channel recently, and kind of I always want to love cassettes, and then they always end up disappointing me. And and I love what he's doing, trying to uh, share his passion about the. Uh, the cassette format and you know it's it's a it's an imperfect format that uh, every format is but it, it's an interesting format and it's a uh, it's kind of the format i grew up on uh, when i was growing up you know we we did cassettes and we we made cassettes for each other and you know this is before you could uh, burn cds and this was back when cds were very very expensive so yeah that we we did cassettes and it was kind of you know vinyl was our parents kind of thing <laughs> Some kids had vinyl, we had some 45s and seven inches, you know, that type of thing. But cassette was our thing and I always keep a cassette deck around and I do still have a small collection of cassettes and every once in a while I'll pick one up and play around with it. So this is what I got. I picked this up in a thrift store in Orlando, I believe. Many years ago I went to, geez, this was back before we had a Harbor Freight here in town. I went to Orlando to get some tools and there was a thrift store next door and found this in there. I think it was it was four or five dollars. It was super cheap and I've had it forever. And it's, it's a good sound and tape deck. And uh, this is this is what I use when I listen to cassettes. So as I said, it's, it's nice for what it is. I would like to upgrade at some point to a nice three head cassette deck with some calibration features and all that kind of stuff. But for now, uh, this does a trick and it's it's really nice and it's, you know, kind of fully automatic and you know does all the Dolby different Dolby uh, Dolby noise reductions does do a HX Pro uh, so yeah it's it's a nice cassette deck and uh, that's that's what I have for a cassette deck 
Okay, next we're going to move on to this next sort of section here and I'll talk about all three of these devices. And first thing we have down here on the very, very bottom is the Sony Video Cassette Recorder, DVD Recorder, RDR VX560. As it says, it's a VHS and DVD recorder, so you can transfer VHS to DVD. Or, or back, I guess, if you want to do that for some reason. Uh, it's a really nice unit. It does have HDMI out, so you can actually watch a VHS tape on HDMI, uh, which is a very, very nice feature. This does have this uh, thing that folds down. You can do DV in, um, USB. You can play some, uh, you know, you can play some AVI files and photos and stuff like that on there. You got your analog inputs on the front. A really, really nice unit. This was also a Goodwill find. I don't remember. I think it was around, it was somewhere between 10 and $20, I think. Uh, this was, again, probably eight or nine years ago at this point. It was, it was a pretty new unit when I found it. It looked like somebody had bought it. It was even in the box. Somebody had bought it. They couldn't figure out how to work it, and they just donated it to Goodwill for some reason. I don't know why it was there. It works perfectly. It was in the box with the remote and the instructions and everything. And yeah, it's a good unit. So occasionally when you want to have the reason to watch a VHS tape, uh, occasionally you find an oddball one in a thrift store you want to see, this is the way to do it, in, in my opinion. And uh, it's easy to transfer stuff that's on VHS if you want to do that. Just been a really great unit, as I said. It's got HDMI out, and uh, I think as time goes on, these are getting more and more valuable because people want them. They're not really making VHS players anymore, so one with features like this that has HDMI out and you know, cross cross burning, cross uh, cross recording kind of thing, uh, very very nice. So that is that. We don't really use the DVD portion of it to watch DVDs, which I just use it to if I have to transfer something from VHS to DVD or from uh, DV tape to DVD, uh, I do that occasionally. But yeah, that's how, that, that's how this gets used, mainly is just for watching uh, or copying VHS tapes. All right, so moving up, this is my digital disc player. This is another Pioneer Elite unit, a uh, really, really nice unit. Where did I find this? I think this was an eBay purchase. Yes, this was an eBay purchase. I remember that now. I don't remember what I paid for it. I do know I got a pretty good price on it. I think it was probably around $50. Um, the nice thing about this, it plays DVD audio and Super Audio CDs. It plays uh, both of those things, so that's very, very nice. Um, it's also a DVD player for if you want to watch DVD movies. We don't use it for DVD movies. It's a little bit older of a player, and just newer newer players have better decoding, I think. So I mainly just use this for CDs, uh, DVD audio, and Super Audio CDs, and this is a way to uh, to listen to them. And it's a really nice unit. It uh, does have a nice display on the front. I do like having a, a display on the front that shows uh, the track number and the time. It's getting really, really difficult to find players that show that anymore. All these new players that are coming out, they don't really show you anything on the front, uh, which is annoying. I know they're trying to cut down the prices on things, but it, I really like to be able to have that information at a glance. Uh, and a really great sounding unit, as a, you know, it's 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 an elite. Pioneer unit. It's made to play DVD audio and Super Audio CDs, so it's it's got some good quality components in here, and it, and it just sound sounds really really good. Uh, so that's what I use for both standard CDs and high definition uh, disc format uh, listening. Move on to the last piece of equipment in this in this shelf, and this is our Blu-ray player. It's a Sony BDP S6200. Uh, it's from several years ago at this point. It's a nice Blu-ray player. This is what we use to watch movies with. It's just a good solid Blu-ray player and it does have a, a display on the front so you can tell how far you're into the movie and stuff. And again, for some reason these new players that are coming out, even the expensive ones, you don't get the screen on the front and it's frustrating. I really like to be able to look over and see am I 30 minutes into the movie? Am I an hour and a half into the movie? You know, How much longer do I have to go? I, I really like that at a glance sort of look at where I'm at and it's frustrating that these new players don't have that. So this is what we're using. It's it's a nice Blu-ray player. 
Um, it also does some streaming type stuff and everything, but we don't use it for that. We just use this strictly for uh, Blu-ray movies. All right, moving on to the next shelf we have here. This uh, shelf has a few items on it I'd like to talk about. First thing I'll talk about here, this is, uh, <laughs> This is my, actually my most recent purchase, I think. Uh, this is my Sony mini disc recorder, MDS-JE320. It's sort of on the lower end of the Sony line of mini disc recorders. Uh, I, found a, I found this for a great deal on eBay. Uh, it was around $10. I paid hardly anything for it. I used some eBay bucks I had to pay for most of it. I just sort of got into this mostly thanks to Matt he, he sort of got me into mini disc a bit when he was getting into it. I've just been playing around with this. It's fun just to play around with. At the time when mini disc was out, it was not real popular here in in the U.S. and it was very expensive. And at the time, I just didn't have the money to to really get into mini disc. And it's it's a neat format, and I, I've been enjoying uh, just sort of playing around with it and, and experiencing it and uh, being able to do the mini disc thing. And it and it's it's been fun. So yeah, this was just a toy. It, you know, it mini disc is not a great format. Well, I mean, it it had a lot of potential. Mini disc had a lot of potential. Unfortunately, it never really got to be able to take advantage of that potential. Um, it could have been a high definition music format when they got to the you know the one gigabyte discs and stuff. Unfortunately, physical media is always a tough thing. It's a tough thing to get people to adopt it. It's a tough thing to, you know, fight against the simplicity of, you know, at the time MP3s were coming around and they were really crappy, but they were really convenient and convenience always seems to win when it comes to convenience versus quality. So unfortunately it had an uphill battle and it just didn't make it. But it's, a, it's a neat format and I've been uh, having a fun time experimenting with it. On top of here is a digital over the air TV tuner and it also is a recorder as well. Uh, I do have a, a tuner built into our TV, but this is nice that I can plug in a USB drive and record anything that's being broadcast over the air. Uh, digital over the air since we don't subscribe to any sort of direct cable or satellite TV services. Uh, that's our way to watch things like uh, the uh, Oscars and you know the, the big the big award shows are nice to watch over the air and any kind of events, uh, political debates, those kind of things, any any kind of things that you would want to watch live over the air. Um, this is the way we used to do that. And also, as I said, I can put in a USB drive and record things if I need to do that. Uh, it's just a nice, nice way to do that. Uh, and then the last device here is our Apple TV. I believe this is the fourth gen Apple TV. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the generations. It's not the newest one, but it's the one before that. Uh, so this one, I don't think this one does 4K and HDR and all that stuff that the new one does, but it's it's one of the nicer, newer Apple TVs with the with the touch remote and the, the gaming uh, features and all that kind of stuff that they added into the Apple TV. And this is our main streaming thing that we use. We use this for you know watching all our streaming services: Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, Comedy Central stuff. Uh, you know, watch The Daily Show through that. Um, I also use this for streaming music from my music server. So I think we'll talk about that next and how I do things in the digital realm as far as my digital music collection. Okay, so down here in this tower computer case, I have basically a home theater PC slash server. We use this for any kind of home theater PC kind of uses. There are times when you'll find something that will stream on a computer that won't stream on a streaming device like the Apple TV or a Roku or something like that. They have those blocks sometimes. For some reason, you can only stream on PC. Uh, that, that gets used for this as well. Um, I can do some playback of uh, multi-region DVDs. If we get a DVD from a different region, or Blu-ray from a different region. Uh, you can play that here in this as well. Uh, this also is where I store the digital rips of all my physical CDs that I own. I rip all my physical CDs to Apple lossless format. 
Um, it is an open source format. It is able to, I'm able to use it on my digital audio player that I use, and it's a lossless audio format that compresses the music slightly, so it does help with space, but it's completely lossless, so you get the full audio quality of the CD that you've ripped. Uh, so you can see on the screen here, this is iTunes and showing some of the stuff I've been ripping recently. I'm still in the process of ripping my entire CD collection to uh, this lossless format. This is sim somewhat of a new project for me. I just sort of did a scorched earth thing, got rid of all my music, or actually it's still on my computer in my office, but eventually that's going to go away and I'm just going to replace it with this library. Uh, at that point, uh, because I have stuff I've gotten way back in the days from Napster and all the stuff that came before that even, I've got, you know, who knows what quality any of it is in. And I just want everything to be high quality and I want to own everything I have as well. So uh, this is this is my way of doing that, just sort of scorched earth, starting over, ripping everything to Apple lossless. It's gonna be in lossless format. That's the best it can be. And uh, that's how it's gonna be done. So that gets stored on the server here as well. It gets other uses from time to time. If you just need to quickly look something up on the internet, that's easy to do. We'll switch over to the Apple TV and I'll show you everything from that end of things. You kind of see, we'll, we'll see some of these maybe albums again. Okay, so we're here on the Apple TV screen now. And of course, we, as I said, we got all the streaming services here. Uh, but the nice thing, this is why I'm talking about this, is it does have to do with audio, is this is how I stream my own personal music collection without having to pull out discs and play them. Um, I just go here to computers, um, and it automatically will sense that this computer is up and running and has iTunes open, and uh, we'll be able to see all of my, uh, go here, and I can just go here to uh, click on albums, and it'll show all the different albums I have here. And you know, there's that there's that MC Hammer album I was that was on the last screen on the computer. And everything I have in here, I own a physical copy, and it's all Apple lossless format. So it's the highest quality it can possibly be. And I can go go in and, and play any of these. And I can play that one. That one's probably not copyrighted. Um, <laughs> So this is what I do for my digital music, and it's a really nice way to have that experience of being able to listen to anything in your collection easily, quickly, and high quality without having to go find the disc, and it's a nice way to do things. So that's pretty much my system. That's gonna do it for the tour of my music listening setup, and that's also our home theater and everything else as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tour. If, uh, if you have any questions or comments about any of the gear I talked about in this video, you know what to do, put it down in the comments down below. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you aren't already. I do a lot of videos here related to audio, talking about vinyl records, CDs, talk about gear on occasion, talk about a few other things here on the channel. Uh, if you think you might be interested, think about subscribing. I would appreciate that. So thank you all for watching. Have a great day, great night, and we'll see you again real soon. Cheers.